Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special episode of the Good Old Podcast. I'm Jackie Franchuli, Wahoo's 24 7 publisher. And we wanted to debut another series, you know, just as I mentioned on my first episode, there'll be times where you'll get a bonus midweek episode, most likely appearing on Apple and Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts on on Thursdays. And today we'll debut our series called A New Class. In this series, we want to just kind of introduce to you those guys that put pen to paper on early signing day and national signing day. So actually, we've had this recorded for a, probably about a month and a half now, the signees from the early signing day period spent a few minutes with me to kind of introduce themselves and for the UVA fan base to get them to get them know better. So you learn a little bit about them and their personalities, and you learn what to expect when they get on grounds over the summer. And actually, on our first episode, you'll learn a little bit more about the two early enrollees, which is the reason why we recorded these a little bit earlier. So. Without further ado, let's go to our first episode of the new class series where we welcome Trey McDonald, Stevie Bracey, and Davis Lane. So thanks, guys, for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks for having us. All right. Well, obviously, we're dealing with a lot of snow, especially the two down in the bottom who are in Charlottesville right now. Um, yes, Stevie ma'am. and Davis, how has it been being in Charlottesville? This is, I think, I believe your first day. Yes. Yeah, so uh, last night we or yesterday we moved in. I, I've been here since Friday, but yesterday we moved in. Last night was my first night and it was first night. So it was weird. I uh, I moved in and my parents, my parents haven't gone home yet because obviously we drove up from Georgia and it's too much snow to kind of drive back down. But um, it's it was it was weird kind of sleeping. It, it kind of felt like a summer camp. Yeah, so that's that's the best way I can describe it. Yeah, it, feels it like hasn't a, like hasn't like hit me yet. Yeah, it feels like I a, think it's going to Wednesday when we have class. Exactly when when I have to wake up tomorrow morning and I have my first class at twelve. So uh, <laughs> yeah. other than that, it's been it's been a weird experience so far. And and I, and I know is it surreal that you're college students now that you you've already yep. started your college career. We were just we were just talking about yeah. that a couple a couple minutes ago. We were like, dude, we're, we're in college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and Trey, I know you're not in college still. You're in snowy Tennessee. Um, so w- how has it been kind of watching on from Tennessee as, you know, Coach Elliott's kind of putting together his staff? Um, you know, I was anxious at first, but as the process kept going on and on, I kept, you know, I, I had faith in him and he kept making some great decisions that I saw in the coaching staff. So, you know, it's just been great to kind of relax a little bit and know that it's in good hands. What did you think of the all the hires so far? Love them. Um, you know, I, I like the the discipline uh, that I think the military academy guys are going to bring in, and I think they're a great group of energetic people. And you know, it, it's just going to be fun to meet them. So, do you have you spoken to any of them previously? I know sometimes they. I, I've noticed that some of them have recruited a few of you before. Um, so, have you had any experience with any of this coaching staff right now? Um, no, not really. Um, most of the recruiters from the spots they came from were, you know, position coaches that I didn't really, that aren't coming. So it was a little different, but fun to see. So. And you two in Charlottesville, have you met the coaches already? Yes, ma'am. I, um, I know you, I don't know if you know, but coach Slade, one of the, the I think he's doing, uh, outside linebackers, you know, mm-hmm. He coached. At, he was head coach of my rival school in Atlanta, mm-hmm. Pace yes. Academy. Yes, mm-hmm. So we have been playing against each other since eighth grade, and uh, it was it was weird. I'm not gonna lie to to see Coach Slade in a Virginia uniform. Now that we're on the same team, so that was one. That was kind of the first things that I was taken back by. And Coach Downing was at Kennesaw State. He recruited my brother, and I went on the official visit with my brother. And uh, Coach Downing told you know my dad tells me that Coach Downing told me that if I keep it up, I'll be playing for him one day. And uh, now, kinda, now it's kind of come full circle. So I've met, uh, and I also met Coach Schmo. I love Coach Schmo. Coach Schmo's an amazing guy. I met some. I met one or two of the assistant um, strength and conditioning coaches. But Coach Schmo sat down when we came up yesterday while we were eating um, eating lunch, and we had a great conversation with him and Coach Slade and Coach Sintum. Who well, I guess Coach Sintum's not new, but mm. yeah. And so Coach Smotherman goes by Coach Smo. Yes. Okay. I, I just think Coach Smotherman is an excellent name for a strip and conditioning coach. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. It is. 
And Davis, did you interact already with uh, Coach Kitchings and uh, a little bit of with Coach Elliott since you've been there? I did, yes. Uh, I got to meet them, you know, face to face, which was great. And uh, I think we hit it off pretty, pretty good. But I, I, um, I knew Coach Gaither from uh, Army. Mm-hmm. So he, he actually recruited me. Um, he like offered me from Army. So I, I knew him. But other than him, I don't think I really knew anybody else. But I, you know, I shook all their hands and met, met all of them. They all seem like great guys, and I'm excited to play for them. Now, your class went through a lot of ups and downs together. Uh, even before everything that went on with Coach Bronco Mendenhall, I felt like your class was such a tight-knit group, just from the way you guys interacted with each other on Twitter. But just getting to know each and one of you when I've been talking to you, it seems like you guys – bonded really strongly um did you become even closer after bronco mendenhall stepped down absolutely um yeah i mean i would i the although we did have some decommitments um i think in our group chat we all talked about kind of although we were sad bronco coach mendenhall was leaving um we kind of figured out i mean that obviously you commit people say don't commit to a coach but you can't you wouldn't commit to a school of a coach you don't like so, I mean, obviously, we were all pretty sad that Coach Mendenhall was leaving. But at the end of the day, we knew that the way Virginia was going with their football program, that whoever they brought in afterwards would either meet the expectations Coach Mendenhall met or exceeded them. So um, I think, yes, we did uh, come together. And obviously, those who departed, departed, which they had a – I mean, I can understand why they did that. But um, I think we became closer together. And uh, Trey was leading our group chat <laughs> when uh, – when everyone started to leave, just trying to make sure everyone was staying. And then now we still have the people we have. Did you feel responsibility to do that, Trey? Um, you know, we, we kind of – I was texting everybody individually. And we were all kind of like, you know, we got to see where this goes. We got to see where this goes. But then, you know, a few kids started jumping ship and then other people's opinions started to change a little bit. Like you saw a little bit of a change in mood and like the Will Hardy and stuff. and. Mm-hmm. You know, like, especially us three, us three are really close together. And, like, we were like, hey, man, we can't lose any of these guys. Like, we love these guys. we got to keep them on board. And we just decided to have, like, a big conversation in the group chat and talk about it. And we still lost a few, but I think the people that stayed, you know, we, we kind of realized, hey, these guys are great. You know, they want to be a part of this. They want to be a Wahoo. So it's pretty cool to have that. Coaching searches are unbelievable how how much turmoil it is, how much chaos, how much information gets thrown at you from every every side. How did you guys navigate that? Because I know as a reporter, I was getting thrown names left, right, and you try to kind of keep keep your head on seeing which which one was agents kind of throwing it at you. How did you guys manage it when you were being told, hey, there's a rumor about Anthony Point Dexter coming? There's a rumor about Tony Elliott coming. There's a move that they interviewed Josh Gaddis from Michigan. How did you navigate that when all those names were going and you just were worried about like, am I even going to have a home in the month? Yeah. I mean, the craziest thing was about a week after coach Bronco stepped down, I had uh, coach Zach Bradshaw come to my house and talk to me. And, you know, he basically told me, Hey, coach Poindexter, coach Poindexter is the guy like he, it's, it's everything but set in stone. So, you know, we were all kind of excited for that and then that fell through. So, we kind of went crazy and, um, you know, just to have that stressed out, but then it was wonderful to, you know, hop on the zoom with coach Elliot and just have him reassure us, you know, we love every single one of you guys. We want every single one of you guys here. So. Did you, you both Davis and Stevie, did you feel like you were just to kind of, cause you got, you both were early enrolling. So you were even more on a time crunch than a lot of your other fellow commits so when you were hearing this, like Anthony Pointex didn't work out, Tony Elliott leaving Charlottesville before saying yes to an offer, although he eventually did come back, you're looking at this like, man, I don't know even, I'm going to be going early and rolling here soon. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, my parents said it well um, with the offers that I had. Um, if Virginia didn't come along, I probably would have gone to one of the Ivy Leagues. So at the end, everything was about academics. And then obviously football came afterwards. And I know you probably just hear that a lot, but that was actually, that was very strong in my parents' beliefs. So um, to be completely honest, we didn't really, we knew that, I, I personally believe that I wanted there to be a coach set in stone before I came on campus. But with the, 
for quality education that Virginia gives, we didn't really care um, what coach was there. And we also knew that if it didn't work, there was always a way to go somewhere else. But we weren't really – I was worried, but my worries weren't really valid because at the end of the day, once football's over, I have a Virginia degree. That I'll... Yeah, I would say, uh, like, right after Coach Mendenhall announced he was stepping down, I, like, talked to my coach, and he was like, you know, you don't need to worry at all. Like, you're at a great place. They're going to hire a great guy. Because I was like, do I do I decommit? Do I open my recruitment back up? What do I do? And he was like, you're fine. Just stay where you are. Everything will work out. And it'll be fine. And I just I listened to him. And, and now, you know, everything's great. So. so now that you guys are settled, let's talk about the dynamic of this 2022 class. Again, we, we talked about how you guys are tight-knit. It seemed like, Trey, did you become the leader throughout this whole thing? Like, how would you envision your role in this 2022 no, class? Again? No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, yes, okay. Please, Sorry. Please don't, don't, even, don't even put that in the atmosphere. Yeah, okay. you know, Stevie Stevie likes to, you know, claim the leadership because we oh, all whoa, whoa, whoa. Elliot, he was like, oh, I got a future captain in Stevie. And, you know, he, his head exploded after that one. Get a load of this guy. <laughs> but, you know, it's it, I don't think it, it's not really a leadership type role in any of us. It's just we're all there and we're all ready to work and we're all ready to get at it. So it's exciting. I feel like Will Betridge, every time I talked to him early on, he was always giving me like a list of recruits that he was going for. It was a five-star, four-star. It was in California, Hawaii. That kid was going to recruit. So how would you sum up Will Betridge for me? You know, he's a kicker. He's a specialist. He's a specialist. (laughs) He's a specialist. (laughs) But, you know, we were all kind of worried. Uh, We had stuff going on in our football seasons and, you know, he probably practices for 15 minutes a day, so he had time to do all of that. So. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll, I'll tell Will to uh, maybe skip this part. It is. <laughs> when he's listening to the podcast. Um, so how would you assess your individual roles in this group? Uh, I, I feel like Trey's a jokester just from talking right now. He's got good jokes. How would you guys define each other? <laughs> Um, you know, I, I always think Stevie and Davis, they're, they're the love bugs. Um, you know, they're, they're constantly. <laughs> <hanging out. laughs> oh my goodness. Um, and we still got a few quiet ones. Like Carson's a little quiet and trying to break him out of his shell, but Will's a hoot. Sean is a character and a half. Um, <laughs> You know, everybody's just great. It's, it's so much fun. Yeah. It's a lot of diversity. Yes, very, very diverse, very diverse group of people. Do you, do you agree on the, his, their assessment there, Stevie and Davis? Uh, I mean, I'm not going to disagree, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in the ballpark. <laughs> um, finally, you know, when we're, we're looking ahead to – because you guys will be part of, you know, Tony Elliott's first class. So a lot of people are going to be looking at you guys as where Tony Elliott's going to start, I guess, his culture, stamping what Tony Elliott wants to do with the UVA program. How would you want to be remembered when, let's say, myself and fellow reporters are interviewing you in four years' time? How would you want to be remembered? The time ACC champs, but yeah. um, that, that's it. That's a great start. Um, I mean, the like Coach Minahal and that staff laid a great foundation. And I think building on top of that foundation, just kind of ending where getting to where they want it to be. Um, I know that they won the Coastal Championship once. Um, I think, oops, is that 2019? Yeah. So trying to get back there and then build on top of what they, what they started. So I think definitely Coach Elliott can help us get. And, and I definitely believe that in a couple of years of, in the hallway to stay, we still had the same staff and program. It would have been an uh, upward trending slope, but I think with Coach Elliott, we can build upon what they already started. So, and like uh, Trey said, AC champs once, twice, maybe three times. <laughs> but um, I think that's where we're. I think we're headed in the right direction. From and oh yes, and beat Tech obviously. <laughs> Always beat Virginia Tech. Maybe throw some UNC in there. I've heard so it's this. It's, it's getting a pretty heated rivalry there between UNC and UVA too. 
Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Me and Davis have that personal vendetta, but you know, <laughs> it's it, it's tough for us. Yeah. Um, you know, they stole. They stole. We could add the triangle, like that triangle. <laughs> like, you know, it's tough, but you know, they, it, it's going to be fun. You know, not there's not going to be an easy game out there, and that's going to be a really fun one to play. So. So thanks, guys, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Those guys are definitely going to provide some entertainment in those media press conferences. I can already tell. Remember, we'll have a brand new episode of the Good Old Podcast on Tuesday. It'll be available on anywhere that you listen to your podcast. We are already on Apple and on Spotify. You can also see the video version of the podcast on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell so you are notified when a new episode has been loaded up. And make sure you also review and rate our podcast on Apple. So from me, Jackie Franchilli, from Trey McDonald, Stevie Bracey, and Davis Lane, have a good weekend, everybody.